Hi everyone, welcome to day three of HTN Now, the June edition of our event series. I'm John from HTN. This is the second session of three today. The session earlier this morning, we held focus on a recent hospital move with the Royal Papworth Hospital. So if you missed that, that will be available on our website to watch back this afternoon. This session, we focus on King's College Hospital, NHS Foundation Trust, and redesigning patient journeys and improving access to services. We have four speakers joining us today. We have Jonathan Lofthouse, Site Chief Executive at King's College Hospital, Charlotte English, the Senior Improvement Lead at King's College Hospital, Kenny Bloxham, the MD at Health Communications, and Pete Beaumont, the Sales Director at In Touch with Health. As always, if you have any questions during the session, please type them into the chat area and we can revisit them at the end of the session. Um, and if you're on social media, please use hashtag HDN now. Um, so that's it from me. Over to you guys, if you are ready. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll just take you through the agenda. Uh, and first of all, thank you very much for attending um, our uh, presentation today. Uh, so we're going to give you a brief introduction to King's College Hospital, NHS Foundation Trust. We're then going to give you an introduction to the reset and recovery programme uh, that we've been working through over the last nine months. Um, and then we'll start to look at you know, that in practice uh, and the integrated technology to, the re to redesign patient journeys. We'll then finish off with a quick summary and a q and A. I'm now going to pass you over to Jonathan, who will take you through, through an introduction uh, and then through to the programme itself. Kenny, thank you. Colleagues, very good morning from uh, South London. I'm Jonathan Lofthouse. I'm the Site Chief Executive uh, for part of the King's Hospital Group. So I look after the South part of our group and five hospitals within that sector um, as part of the King's College. So just to give you a little bit of an overview for two minutes on King's uh, and what we've endeavoured to do. So uh, we're one of the largest uh, university teaching institutions in the UK um, and operate from a, a number of sites, six sites across the South and Southeast London Peninsula. We also have a, a substantial uh, overseas interest with relationships with 32 other overseas institutions. Uh, we operate uh, the full spectrum of uh, acute and tertiary uh, services um, with international renown for our liver transplant and neurosciences services um, and also our fetal medicine service. But also at the heart of uh, our care is the fact that we're, in essence, district general hospitals for large swathes of the South London population. So the map you're hopefully seeing in front of you now has our King's College Hospital Denmark Hill site listed towards the kind of 11 o'clock position of the clock. Um, that's our core campus, around about an 800 bedded campus. And then towards the south of the map, you're seeing the Princess Royal University Hospital. That's where I'm speaking to you from today. That's one of our larger district general uh, sites, around about 600 bedded district general sites. And collectively, we make up uh, the King's College Hospital. Uh, within the South East London area, we have two other uh, hospital groups that are sovereign organisations. So at the very top of the picture, St Thomas's and Guy's, uh, that's uh, uh, St Thomas's and Guy's University Hospitals, and then Lewisham and QE, uh, that's uh, uh, Lewisham and Greenwich NHS Trust. So across South East London, there are three sovereign organisations, be it that we're endeavouring to work together within the emerging spirit of an ICS. In terms of size, uh, King's uh, sees round about uh, one and a half uh, to 1.6 million outpatient uh, attendees each year uh, and has an operative uh, interaction of around about 32,000 patients through 36 uh, theatres uh, spaced across our organisation. And we're serving a local population, which is just over a million, uh, but in terms of our tertiary and quaternary services, uh, we serve up to 4 million uh, of the southeast of England population. So sizable in 
any regard. But actually, the challenges, whether uh, large or small in terms of organizational context, um, are different, but no less acute. So as we've come out of uh, the waves of COVID, um, we're facing substantial backlogs of elective patients, a very high uh, capacity demand need for uh, routine and urgent outpatients, and a demographic which sees us routinely interacting with a population um, that houses over 56 uh, languages where uh, English is not the uh, first mother tongue. So quite a complex environment within which we work. I'm now going to pass over to Charlotte English. Charlotte's one of uh, our transformation uh, leaders here at King's. Charlotte's been kindly um, holding the ring on uh, my behalf for large swathes of our recovery and reset program uh, and our move towards digital by uh, default. And I'm going to join you again in a little bit later on during our webinar this morning. So Charlotte, thank you very much. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, so I'll start by introducing our kind of programme of work and what we've been um, working on for the last uh, sort of over 12, 12 months now um, since we started. So um, we set up a, a reset and recovery uh, programme across King's and um, outpatient um, transformation program uh, feeds into that overarching uh, program of work. Um, our main ambition um, was to move to a digital by default um, outpatient pathway and improve our communications uh, via digital means um, with our patients and look at ways of um, working with um, third parties which could um, integrate uh, together uh, to serve a blended um, flow of um, work. We can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. And so February last year was when uh, we initially implemented Attend Anywhere, which a lot of organisations I know did, um, to provide us with a way of continuing our outpatient activity um, through the pandemic. Um, albeit this was deemed not appropriate for all patients. And so for those, uh, we did revert um, to using um, telephone um, appointments instead. In June time, um, we then made a decision um, to expand our use of InTouch. So we already had a number of kiosks across uh, the uh, King's um, sites, um, but are looking to provide all patients with an option uh, to be able to self-check in via a kiosk or via their mobile phone um, rather than through a uh, standard um, receptionist. But also um, look at uh, other ways of communicating with our patient, patients. So when July came, we did a um, uh, beauty parade of uh, third party suppliers um, and we settled on healthcare comms um, predominantly due to the, the breadth of the, the offering and the ability to uh, work very closely with InTouch to provide that end-to-end -end, um, outpatient pathway that we are uh, striving to achieve. And then in August, uh, we we procured um, the um, healthcare comms uh, solution um, and the, the projects essentially um, kicked off. And I'll go into a bit more detail as to kind of where we are later, um, later on in the in the slide deck. Um, so I'll hand over to uh, Kenny to provide um, more detail on the offering. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, so how are we going to achieve in practice? Um, we are looking to bring together our best and brave platforms and we created a patient first blended digital and non-digital pathway, ensuring all patients receive the highest level of care. As you can see from here, our integrated approach takes the patient from referral to discharge seamlessly, whether they are on a face-to-face -face or virtual pathway. We'll now take you through each of the steps. With any outpatient's pathway, it starts with the referral and the initial appointment letter. Our patient portal is deployed 
in 38 NHS trusts and creates a digital front door for the patient. The patient can choose to register, managing all their hospital appointments and correspondence together in one place, or simply consume as they go along. Patient choice is important, and we find forcing patients to register does reduce digital adoption, something we are very conscious of at HC. Either way, whether they are registered or consume as they go along, the patient can always access an appointment and correspondence digitally. Reducing digital exclusion is something we have taken very serious for our patient first integration approach. Patients can now read the hospital correspondence digitally with a host of inclusivity tools. These include text without allowed or text and voice conversions of up to 99, lang up to 99 languages. And of course, if the patient does prefer to post a postal letter or does not interact digitally, our platform will immediately send the postal letter in the post. So we do know that 7% of patients who were sent a digital appointment notification choose to want to reschedule, with 90% of the requests made within 24 hours. The middle uh, phone you can see here, we're going to be deploying our appointment scheduling bot, which will empower the patient to choose a slot which is more suitable for them. The bot can be deployed across a number of different channels and really looking to give the patient the power to enable themselves to manage their own care. Finally, prior to the appointment, the patient will receive a conversational reminder, either by SMS or voice, with specific interactivity configurable by specialty and clinic. We do know, as the patient moves through their pathway, they will need support and help. We have already deployed our FAQ virtual assistant to offer 24 7 access to the most general inquiries. Our FAQ virtual assistant, as you can see here, is deployed on the King's website and soon to be deployed on the King's social media channels, Google search, and patients who do, who do contact the trust by telephone will also be given the option to deflect themselves to the FAQ virtual assistant via a digital channel. Again, driving self-serve where possible. So what about patients who need support when they're at the hospital? InTouch's innovative eye receptionist brings interactive communications to its well-established kiosk solution. With the addition of video and sound, patients can now see and speak with a member of the trust staff who can be online elsewhere in the trust or even at home. This will greatly assist with social distancing and will allow the King, Kings to maximise the use of their workforce. I'm now going to hand over to Peter. Thanks, Kenny. So through our ecosystem, we've built the ability for patients to self-check in digitally, whether that's a face-to-face -face attendance or for a virtual appointment. Through Healthcare Comms eClinic video consultation platform, Patients access their unique URL, which in turn activates the check-in workflow within touch. At this point, the patient is taken through the visual sound and network checks in preparation for their appointment. For face-to-face, -face, patients can still check in in the traditional way via kiosks, with a barcode scanner included to minimize screen contact. Uh, in addition, we're now able to offer patients the option to use their smart devices to check in. So InTouch's mobile appointment manager allows patients to check in even from outside of the hospital and be held there until suitable socially distanced space is available within the waiting areas. And only at that point are they then called back into the building. And all of that can be automatically driven through the InTouch system. At the check-in, the patients are presented with demographic information that can be checked and any additional questions can also be asked. So, for example, COVID symptoms questions. This technology is well proven. It's already in use in well over 100 hospitals uh, in more than 50 trusts. It reduces queues out of busy reception areas and as a great tool for uh, patient satisfaction, it also can tell them what the current wait time is and that's constantly automatically updated. Once successfully checked in, either for their video or the face-to-face -face appointment, the patient can be held in either a virtual waiting room 
or a physical waiting room. The clinicians automatically uh, notified when the patient has checked in and they're available and then they can call the patient into their room or join a video call when, for their consultation all at the just the click of a button. We're even exploring the idea of offering patients digital magazines while they're in that virtual waiting room so um, no longer any threadbare well-read out-of-date magazines all of those will be digital and up-to-date. So the real benefit of in such and healthcare communications working together is delivering a joined up solution that benefits both clinicians and patients alike. So in such all outpatient appointments should be managed in a similar way, whether the engagement's face-to-face -face video or even phone. And by bringing all of those attendances together on a single dashboard, we can offer busy clinicians a simple intuitive view of all of their appointments and the appointment type. Some of you will be familiar with the InSearch Flow Manager dashboard, uh, and that's what you're looking at here. And essentially, this is a clinician's blended clinic list with patients who have arrived highlighted in green. And the clinic type is shown in the icons that are, are, are circled on there. So the loud hailer is for calling a patient for a face-to-face -face appointment. So by pressing that icon, I can call a patient anywhere into the hospital uh, or into an individual waiting room and their name and that destination would appear on calling screens in waiting areas. Um, the video camera icon shows that the appointment is on healthcare communications e-clinic platform and pressing that icon establishes a video connection to the waiting patient. Finally, you can see the phone icon and we're developing that third element which will manage telephony appointments. Once a virtual appointment's established, the eClinic platform has clinician and patient-friendly functionality. The clinician has the ability, but only with the patient's permission, to take control of the patient's camera. So they can zoom in and out, turn the torch on, and even switch the camera from front to back. There's a chat function, the ability to share uh, screens and documents, and finally, speech-to-text text, text translation is available in uh, up to 100 languages. For face-to-face -face appointments, the InSearch solution will also handle all room and resource bookings in, in advance, maximizing the use of precious trust resources. And obviously with the current backlogs, it's, it's essential that all of the assets are used to their maximum. So what we can do as part of the overall integration is some smart things like indicate where a clinic's being cancelled but the room's still reserved so we can start looking at how we can free up those resources. Uh, furthermore we fully understand that most hospital appointments don't just involve you turning up seeing the clinician and leaving there's usually multiple engagements as part of that appointment so uh, the in touch activity manager module allows all of those uh, activities to be planned in advance and pre-organized so it enhances the efficiencies and smooths that patient journey. At the conclusion of the video appointment, outcomes are received back to the trust in real time across the patient portal, Remind and eClinic platform. And if a patient does get referred for a procedure, then part of the end-to-end -end digital solution is a digital pre-op assessment tool. For patients who do require surgery, then Kings are using InSearch's digital pre-op assessment tool uh, called Synopsis. Firstly, the first part of that is Synopsis Home, and this enables patients to complete their pre-op health questionnaires online uh, at home, as the name suggests, removing the need for a physical visit to a hospital. Synopsis captures all of the patient's inputs and generates a potential ASA risk score for the hospital to consider. This means patients who are ASA ones, for example, can be fast tracked for surgery, whilst patients with higher risk scores can be contacted and optimized for their procedures using the in-hospital solution, which we call Synopsis IQ. Uh, Synopsis is currently being deployed at King Southern sites, where it's standardizing eight separate current pre-op processes. Uh, and later this year, the solution will be extended to include King's main site at Denmark Hill. Uh, I'm going to hand back to Kenny now to talk about patient-initiated follow-ups. So, Kenny, over to you. Thanks, Pete. So, we continue working with our partner organisations 
to support and design inclusive workflows. And King's is no different. Our transformation leads are working alongside the King's clinical team to design to, to design new digital and non-digital non-digital non PIFU pathways. Our PIFU activation tools can either be delivered through the patient digital front door, their, their portal, or via SMS through to a virtual assistant for triage, as per the demo here. Activation in all cases will be 24-7, and we're working on automating the outcomes to patients, including pushing advice and guidance, appointment scheduling for patients that have that's appropriate for, or patient to clinician chat. The final part of the pathway is remote monitoring. There will be specific remote monitoring, monitoring tools available, including e-forms, virtual assistants, PROMS collection, which will be important to the switch to virtual. And finally, we are and fully expect to be interoperable with other remote monitoring platforms. That gives you an overview of the pathway from a digital and face-to-face. -face. I'm now going to hand back to Charlotte, who will now look to close out the presentation. Thanks, Kenny. Um, so despite COVID, we've managed to achieve an awful lot in a relatively short space of um, time. So at the back end of last year, uh, we did go live with our um, reminders. Um, so appointment reminders for Peru and South sites. Um, these are um, two-way text reminders, given the ability for the patients to feedback whether they're attending, uh, whether they want to reschedule or cancel their appointment. Um, we also went live with the um, instant patient uh, messaging platform within uh, the Healthcare Comms Envoy system, which was used in anger for uh, contacting patients um, for COVID vaccination um, clinics but also our pharmacy uh, teams, um, Pan Trust, uh, also used it to notify patients when their medications were ready to collect rather than have them um, be waiting in a, in a waiting area and not being able to um, social um, distance. So that was uh, really appreciated there and well used and is continuing to be well used. February, um, we went live with our patient portal for Pru and Self sites um, and um, enabling our patients to be able to start to access and view their appointment letters digitally. Um, we also went live with our chatbot on our Pru and Self sites website, which uh, we saw some uh, significant um, outcomes in terms of patients being able to get answers to their questions out of hours, at weekends, at lunch times when we don't necessarily have um, someone manning the phones at those points of time. In April, um, we started um, our e-clinic um, rollout, uh, which is um, a phased rollout um, to commence um, over summer. Uh, with the priority um, given to um, urgent clinics that were needing to be um, set up, prioritised, and Synopsis IQ and Synopsis Home. So for our main um, pre-assessment um, uh, departments over at Orpington Hospital, as well as our day surgery um, unit, are now using and up and running using um, both Synopsis IQ and Synopsis Home. Um, very successfully, might I add. Um, we've had some really good uh, feedback um, from both our patients and uh, the nursing team using the solution. And then for June, um, we are now looking at um, starting our uh, waiting list validation um, campaign using the portal, um, as well as starting to look at um, patient initiated follow up pathways and how we can use healthcare comms tools uh, to embed PIFU uh, more widely across the organisation. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so where are we now then? So for um, eClinic, um, we've had 94% of our patients provide us with um, positive um, feedback. Equally, we've had um, very positive feedback from the clinicians, um, in particular those that um, had 
used and, and stopped using Attend Anywhere and then reverted to eClinic, um, providing us with uh, feedback to say um, how the functionality that they're able to get through eClinic e was second to none, so that was great to hear. And we've had 113 hours um, of phone admin time saved by having the chatbot on the Pru and South Sites um, website. We've had 96% of our patients um, attending a face-to-face -face, uh, pre-op um, going through um, Synopsis Home. So this is the um, healthcare questionnaire that they complete prior to um, coming in for surgery. And then we've had 340,000 uh, patient messages sent via the um, Envoy uh, platform um, since uh, December, which is quite staggering, really. So very well used. Next slide. And in terms of where the, the kind of the next steps, I guess, of our sort of uh, phased um, deployment of the solution. So um, we are looking um, at uh, platform expansion for InTouch um, to go live in, in new outpatient areas so that all our patients attending an outpatient appointment has the option to uh, use a, a kiosk. Uh, we are currently in testing phase for the mobile application, um, so that again gives patients another option to be able to check in for their appointment um, from, the, from the car, um, just in case they don't want to actually come in on site until um, the actual time of their appointment. Um, so that's in testing at the moment. Uh, we're looking at a PaaS integration, uh, which should be completed by August this year um, to uh, better feed our eClinic and virtual uh, clinics um, platform. We are looking also at um, automating our appointment scheduling as part of our sort of phase three of our um, deployment later this year as well as um, an AI automated patient initiated follow-up um, tool. We've started uh, workshops with um, a number of specialties, uh, Pan Trust now, who are wanting to implement PIFU um, more widely. Um, so we're, we're a little ahead of the game um, there in terms of getting that um, implemented. And next slide. And just in summary then, so um, everything that we're trying to do here, we're trying to push for sort of what, what's the art of the possible. If we've come up with a, a potential um, issue uh, for uh, resolution throughout the implementation, it's working closely with the third parties to look at, okay, well, how do how can we how can we resolve this? Um, how can we use technology um, and push the boundaries there um, to really truly provide that digital end-to-end -end, um, outpatient uh, pathway that we're we're striving for? And obviously we're we're working with third parties that are um, able to integrate with one another and work very closely to help with that seamless um, journey. Um, and we're hoping by sort of the end of sort of autumn that we'll have um, our, our proposed projects all um, implemented by that point. Um, but I'm sure there'll be further sort of expansion as we, as Pete suggested earlier, with um, looking at uh, putting in synopsis over at Denmark Hill for our pre-op over there. Um, so yeah, it's it's very exciting, very exciting times, and and yeah. Next slide. Okay. So we'll welcome any questions from the floor, if there are any. Thank you, everyone. That was a great presentation. If anybody has any questions, just type them into the chat area and we'll we'll go through them now. We've got a few minutes to do so. Just while we wait for some questions to come in, just want to mention our next session today is at 1 p.m. and we look at uh, communication tools uh, for clinicians 
and we focus on a project at Worcester Cute. Right, first question has come in. Thank you, Sue. First question is, how have staff found this change? Shall I take this one? Um, so it's been received really positively. So obviously change is always something that kind of makes staff anxious. Um, I think what we've been able to do is um, take them on the journey from the start. So um, we hold regular um, regular meetings to keep staff groups um, informed. Um, we, in terms of sort of from a, a clinical side, we have designated uh, clinical transformation um, reps to support the outpatient um, program. Uh, which has helped greatly in terms of reaching out to our clinical teams and and kind of uh, getting the engagement that we we need to kind of take some of this stuff um, forward. So I think that's been sort of paramount, um, as well as we regularly go to sort of our clinical director meetings to provide them with updates of um, the project, what we're doing, and provide that forum um, for, for them to be able to voice any concerns that they have uh, that we've been able to kind of take away and, and kind of work on. Um, so I think overall, yes, it's been, you know, these are huge changes that we're, we're putting in, but overall the engagement's been really good. And I think it's just having those key, key people um, that have been uh, designated to, to help push forward with the outpatient programme that has really helped with that. Super, thank you. Um, the next question that's come in is about accessing the recording of this session. So our intention is to make the recording and a write-up article of the session available this afternoon. So yes, that'll be available shortly. The next question is, how do you manage accessibility requirements for patients when implementing things like touch screens or self-service kiosks? Uh, so it's Jonathan, I'm very happy to pick up that question, thank you. Um, so I think the approach that we've taken with uh, both uh, healthcare comms and in touch with health is one of um, part standardization. So as a patient, wherever you arrive at King's, and I mentioned we have eight hospital sites, we have to have the same portfolio um, of uh, tools available to those patients. What we don't have to have is patients forced into using those tools. So through the healthcare uh, communication portal, our accessibility uh, to patient population groups has dramatically increased because we're now able to transfer both uh, written or audio documentation or video communication documentation in any one of 99 languages um, or audibly uh, in any one of 50 spoken formats. So that's a sea change from where we were previously. Uh, as Charlotte suggested, um, and as Pete suggested, we still have uh, clinic areas where we do have front-facing uniform staff um, so ultimately what we've tried to achieve is a blend of the very best. So if you're uh, technologically comfortable, you can check in through your smartphone, you can access bot chat, um, you can access uh, self-service kiosks. If you're possibly a little less confident, you can still uh, speak with a uh, King's member of staff uh, via telephone or video chat. Um, you can still uh, speak with the King's member of staff at the reception desk, um, or you can be assisted in a hybrid of the both uh, by our uh, fantastic volunteers across all of our sites. So if you're less confident but you want to give it a go, we've got plenty of time to uh, show you as a patient how to access the uh, self-checking kiosk. So I think it's about recognising both the cycle change, uh, but also that one size doesn't fit all. I think as well, Jonathan, just, just, just to add to that in terms of the 
in such kiosks um, we do present in a, a, a choice of languages and we also work with more fields to put together a visually impaired workflow as well so if the patient identifies themselves as visually impaired then they get a different look and feel the the, the black on yellow and all the correct uh, fonts and palettes as well that's great thank you the next question as a patient, this all makes a lot of sense and the old ways of working, just curious, why aren't all trusts doing this? What are the barriers? Okay, so I suppose I ought to pick that one up also. Um, so as a chief exec, ultimately I'm a steward for the public purse. Um, so any investment that uh, we make in healthcare technology or service, um, has to have a level of viability economically. Um, everybody, every organisation um, at Healthcare Wise will say they're short of cash. Bear in mind, King's was the organisation that at a point in time had that largest NHS deficit. So if King's can do it, I would challenge that other organisations around the country can uh, do something similar. For me, it's about having a vision um, and an appetite to improve because economically, uh, the technology that we've uh, bought from both InTouch and healthcare communications will save me money and enhance the quality of service I offer to both patients and actually my staff in their working lives. So um, you just need to be a little bit more creative about the art of the possible. If you take uh, PIFU as an example, the investment that we've made in uh, the technology to allow me to initiate PIFU will pay for itself multiple times over as I create uh, a change in workflow at consultant level and at clinic level, um, migrating uh, the need for follow-up slots, uh, allowing me to see more new patients. If you take Synopsys as an example, uh, the cost of me losing an operation today, let's just conversationally say it's three and a half thousand, four thousand pounds per lost operation um, due to a patient being unfit on the day of surgery or uh, for surgeons or anaesthetists encountering an issue that they didn't identify at pre-op. So any uh, impact I can make into ensuring the appropriateness and readiness of patients attending theatre will give me a return on investment. It might not be real cash, it might be quick, but ultimately it's very easy with a level of common business sense to stack forward an innovation uh, argument to create an end-to-end -end ecosystem that will absolutely wash its own face. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm the man that has to stand there in front of uh, my council of governors or MPs and justify the spend uh, for this area of our innovation across Kings. Uh, that's a very easy conversation. So the next question is, well, there's two questions. What EPR do you use at King's? And is in touch working with NHS Digital on the Care Connect agenda with open APIs? So uh, in terms of uh, King's EPR, at the moment we're using uh, an all scripts uh, product. Um, and we're migrating uh, in the near future, in the next two years, uh, to an alternative um, EPR provider. Uh, we have uh, differentials of all scripts across a number of our uh, sites through uh, legacy. So uh, in terms of active interaction, um, we've had to, but also been able to uh, hardwire uh, both tools, both in touch and HCC's portfolio of products into our master engine uh, to allow it to be accessible on all of our sites. I'll let Pete speak around the NHS uh, digital piece. Yeah, so in such endeavour to work um, within that Care Connect agenda, and we are currently um, about to release our open API, so that, that's development and that will be available within the next few weeks. So, yes, we are working to deliver open APIs as well. Thank you. Uh, the next question, um, 
it's clearly been a great project, a great success. Is there anything that you would have done differently? I think maybe that's one for you, Charlotte. I'm happy to let Charlotte answer this. She's had to shoulder the burden of my expectation. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just I was just thinking what what we would have done differently. That's I guess um, sort of probably our e clinic is probably one of the one of the things that we're we it's a slower rollout at Pru and South sites than than we wanted and um, we would have liked it sort of all specialties using it sort of yesterday if not earlier um, and we're not quite there yet and I think um, I think perhaps thinking about it now because we've we've had to kind of do a bit of um, sort of homework in terms of reaching out to um, specialties to identify what are what are their perceived issues with switching clinics to um, video um, are there any barriers in terms of physical space to be able to do uh, video consultations? Um, and I think we're kind of just doing that piece of work now. And I think we we probably could have got ahead of the game there and, and kind of done that a bit earlier, earlier on. So kind of lessons learned for the sort of the Denmark Hill implementation, which we're, we're just about to start. Um, yeah, I think I think we've I think we've achieved an awful lot given the circumstances uh, with staff being redeployed and 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 such to support the COVID response. Um, but yeah, I think we could have perhaps done a bit more homework, I think, and and got ourselves a bit ahead of ahead of the game even more so. Great, thank you, Charlotte. Uh, the next question is. Has the solution been rolled out to all specialties and appointments within the hospital? And the second part of the question is, does it have the potential to manage theatres in the future? OK, so uh, I think we mentioned earlier, we're making this as technology platform available to every one of our sites and therefore every one of our patients. Uh, so around about 1.4 million patients a year will uh, have opportunity to uh, utilise uh, aspects of the technology. Uh, if you take uh, the patient portal and the HCC portfolio of uh, products, um, if you as a patient choose not to uh, interact with us as a hospital through uh, text or digital medium, um, and therefore we auto default to corresponding with you in written print, uh, that written print is also uh, generated and produced through the HCC uh, portal of products. So I think on the simplest level, uh, every one of our interactions uh, is through some aspect of uh, this collection of best of breed technology. Uh, in terms of the theatre piece specifically, uh, Kings are doing uh, two pieces of work and utilising uh, two product pieces from uh, our two partner companies. So uh, with Kenny and the HCC team, we're utilising our patient portal to roll out a mass, a mass validation of our current waiting patients. So like many other units around the UK, uh, I have substantial number of patients on my RTT list. So for Kings, that's 63,000 63, patients uh, on my RTT schedule. Um, and in terms of uh, currently confirmed operation need, that's 12,000 of the 63,000. So we're using uh, Kenny's technology and working with Kenny's team to undertake uh, at a patient, individual patient level um, over the next 12 weeks a mass validation process that will then turn into a cyclical process. Uh, and then with Pete uh, and the synopsis uh, pre operative assessment tool, uh, it's used in theatres in so far as um, individual consultants' patients are held uh, in a directory format. So if you today have been through pre operative assessment, uh, you've been issued a theatre date and you contact the hospital because you're legitimately now no longer fit for operation 
or uh, you're on annual leave, you wish to go on holiday, if the government ever lets us leave the country, the system will tell me uh, every patient under the same surgeon who has been preoperatively assessed for the same or similar procedure, and in so doing, would give me a suggested list of patients who are fit, ready, but equally will fit in the time slot available I have in that theatre session. So uh, we're utilising both products to enhance the day-to-day -day running of the organisation. Excellent, thank you. The next question is, considering the leap forward trusts have made during the COVID period in terms of advancing technology and maintaining social distancing, how are you ensuring it is maintained going forward and specialties are not reverting back to face-to-face -face as the go-to every time? Uh, so uh, two means, really. So first of all, in South London, the commissioners have now uh, stipulated contractually that 25% of our outpatient volume this year has to be undertaken in a virtual format. So, you know, simple mathematics, that's the goods of 380,000 uh, outpatient uh, interactions now contractually uh, need to be in a uh, virtual format um, for which I won't get paid for uh, if they're not. Um, as with most things, that's uh, certainly from a managerial sense, able to concentrate the mind. Ultimately, what we're finding with clinicians is uh, when we provide them with high quality technology and as Charlotte said um, we've had to change out uh, uh, for the comfort and confidence of some of our clinicians some of the desktop tech now we're expecting them to undertake uh, video consultation clinics routinely it's appropriate that they should have high grade technology um, on their uh, clinic desks uh, to be able to do that that actually we're not getting very much uh, pushback from clinicians. Cl clearly clinicians need to be confident to use the technology. The training package is only about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, most clinicians now, after a year of lockdown, are confident in using uh, Microsoft Teams or uh, other forms of web communication. Uh, so that once you've got the confidence, we've got the trust in the system, we're not feeling the pushback we're just uh, struggling to uh, maintain our pace of rollout because clearly financially and operationally we have both restarts, a sea of patients now coming back in from GPs into the organisation and a need to transfer the way we undertake business as usual. Great, thank you very much. Uh, the next one is, is just a comment from Christina. It's, she's put excellent presentation and really informative. So thank you for that, Christina. So that's all the questions we have. Thank you for those who have answered. I'll look to close the session here. So thank you uh, to the presenters. I thought that was a really, really good presentation and uh, really enjoyed it. And thank you to everyone for attending as well. As I mentioned earlier, the session will be available on our website later today, really, is our plan. So thanks, everyone.